हरि ओम तत्सत वेलकम टू स्वामी ज्योतिर्मायानंद सोसाइटी अ जर्नी टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब फॉर द मिस्टिकल मीनिंग्स एंड टू एंजॉय डेली सत्संग वी आर करेंटली एक्सप्लोरिंग श्रीमद भगवत गीता कॉमेंट्रीज बाय स्वामी ज्योतिर्मायानंद जी महाराज नरेटेड बाय माई सेल्फ स्वामी निखिलानंदा सो करेंटली वी आर ऑन चैप्टर नंबर ट्वेल्व भक्ति योगा the yoga of devotion and today we are starting from shloka number 8 god continues with his guidance to arjuna about both the with form without form prayers mayev mana adhatsva mai buddhim niveshaya nivasishyasi mayev at urdhvam na sanshayah focus your mind on me alone let your intellect be fixed on me and you will beyond a doubt abide in me hereafter so here god is saying human body is extremely rare and it's a beautiful wonderful blessing from god to us so let us use it wisely here god is saying if in this body you are able to focus your mind on me and your intellect on me and you will then reach me there is no doubt about it which means we have to dedicate ourselves on this path that is why um, path of satsanga is so blissful satsanga the association of truth when we all come together and we expand our Uh, horizons are knowledge based by studying the scriptures under proper guidance introspecting on the deeper meanings and coming closer to god shloka number 9 ath chittam samadhatum na shaknoshi mai stiram abhyasa yoge na tatato अंडरस्टैंड and pick up the one that is the best for us because first god started with the highest state focus your mind on me but the mind is not easy to focus as we all know it is very turbulent so god says if you can do it then uh, continue to practice remember how many times you fell when you were a baby but you continued your practice and you learned how to walk you learned how to play instrument you learned how to Uh, write and read and make sentences by learning the abc's and so on all of those things we have done by practice so here god is reminding us same thing applies to your spiritual effort also learning the shlokas or reading something profound if you don't understand keep repeating it and you will understand it shloka number 10 abhyase apya samartho asi मत कर्म परमो भवा मदर्थमपी कर्माणी कुरवन सिद्धि मवाप्स्यसी इफ यू आर अनेबल टू प्रैक्टिस अभ्यास देन बाय इंटेंट अपॉन परफॉर्मिंग एक्शंस फॉर मी यू विल अटेन परफेक्शन इवन बाय परफॉर्मिंग एक्शंस फॉर मी देन ही सेज इफ यू आर नॉट used to even doing repetition then just do all your actions for god's name god i'm doing this for you god i'm doing this for you may my day be dedicated to god so that way you don't have to uh, intensely repeat all the actions basically you are giving up your uh, personal greed and personal satisfaction and giving it all to god so says he says if you start doing that then because you are doing your actions for god you will attain perfection because you are being humble you are being egoless you are doing them for god shloka number 11 athe tadapya shak 
ಸಿ ಕರ್ತು ಮದ್ಯೋಗಮಾಶ್ರಿತರ್ಮ ಫಲತ್ಯಾಗಂ ತತಃಕುರುಯತ್ಮವಾನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅನೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಈವನ್ ದಿಸ್ then taking recourse to the yoga of surrender striving to control the mind and senses renounce the fruits of action so here god is saying in taking it one more level deeper that you basically convert mind to thine you surrender to god you have total faith in god's plan and you no matter what happens adversity or prosperity difficult times or prosperous times you continue to uh, surrender to god and then you while at the same time you are trying to control your mind and senses here god says renounce the fruits of the actions don't be attached don't want a particular thing get rid of those cravings then that's another way to come to me then next shloka number 12 shreyo hi gyanam abhyasa gyana dhyayam vishishyate dhyanat karam phalatyaga astyaga chantirantaram indirect knowledge is better than repeated effort and meditation or dhyana is better than knowledge the renunciation of the fruits of the action is better than meditation for peace immediately follows from renunciation beautiful so here god is saying that uh, reading the scriptures is better than uh, just practicing without the knowledge because if you're doing something wrong and then once you learn what's the proper way to do it you save a lot of time and you improve your process greatly so that's why god is saying and most people uh, who work from the brains are paid more than people doing physical manual labor so it's because of that because the mind is more powerful and that knowledge that you get there it can be used in good ways and that's what god is guiding us then he says that meditation is better than um, dhyana so meditation meaning a uh, meditation or dhyana is a higher level than just indirect knowledge because indirect knowledge is theoretical unless you go within and you practice that indirect knowledge then only it will become direct knowledge so while it is good while satsanga is good which is the shravan part then you still have to go do the manan and the nididhyasan manan meaning going within and contemplating nididhyasan meaning meditating so once you are doing that then that is obviously better than knowledge there and the renunciation of the fruits of actions is a even higher state better state why because you still have you are take you have taken out me from the equation you have given it to god you are saying god this is yours this is your plan your earth your water fire air ether my body also is yours therefore everything belongs to you and there whatever fruits of the actions i'm doing are all in thy glory thy name thy worship so please accept these and i will accept whatever you give me as your holy prasad prasad becomes sanctified food which is what we get after the aarti and so whatever the results of the actions are don't worry about them as long as you have done your very best the rest will be god's department he will take care of it and here he tells you directly if you are not interested in the end result then peace automatically follows why would you because all the worries are gone you are doing it for god if people like it great if they don't like it great you did your best and you move on so that is what god is trying to say and peace uh, is a beautiful thing to have isn't it peace of mind we cannot buy uh, sage datatreya uh, said um, he saw um, a crow who was carrying a piece of meat in his um, in his um, uh, beak and he was wanting to go and enjoy that meal in some secluded place but suddenly he saw a lot of bunch of eagles who saw the 
the bird and they were chasing the crow and they were chasing him and they wanted to uh, get his uh, his portion of meat and when the crow saw this he very quickly realized and that they would probably kill him so he dropped that piece of meat and as soon as he dropped it all the eagles left him alone and they went for the piece of meat and the crow was peaceful he got his peace and that is what we have to learn to do give up the fruits of the attachment we are holding our fist so tight that we we don't know how to open it and we continue to live like that in illusion so this is why god is saying once we release that um, whole stressful expectation of results of fruits once you give that up you have immediate peace immediate because you've done you're done with with the expectation part and that is a very profound thing it doesn't happen overnight as you will advance in your spiritual sadhana it will become easier and easier so next shloka 13 adveshta sarva bhutanam maitraha karuna aivacha nirmamo nira ahankaraha samadukha sukha Further, God guides us. He who is free from hatred toward all beings, who is friendly and compassionate to all, who is free from the sense of mindness, meaning attachment and egoism, and is forgiving and balanced in pleasure and pain, such a devotee is dear to me. So as you see, when God says these devotees are dear to me, these are all the things God is wanting us to do. Not just sit in front of an idol and pray and come out and start becoming mean to people again or having jealousy or lust or anger or greed. If those things are not declining and you are not becoming more compassionate, loving, understanding, then you should understand that there is a flaw in your practice that needs to be corrected. But if you are truly becoming a devotee, then all these things should be coming to you where you even, you don't hate anybody, not even the enemies who did bad to you. And that's not an easy state to acquire. It takes effort to get to that point. But you do get there if you have a, if you have a, um, a guru who is compassionate and you are also putting in the effort because then God also blesses such an aspirant with his grace. So that then that hatred goes away. We become friendly and compassionate. Why? Because we see everybody just like us. If we are hurting, then other person is also hurting. So we should be uh, understanding. And then once we give up the sense of me, 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 me and my ego, mine, then it is all thine. What is mine? My breath is not mine. This body is not mine. We think due to illusion, we think it's mine. But ultimately, it's his gift. And he will take it away whenever that time arrives. So while we have this body, let us make hay while the sun shine, shines and do what we are doing right now. Enjoy the Bhagavad Gita, go deeper into the shlokas, connect with God, forgive others who may have hurt you uh, and uh, seek forgiveness from those who you may have hurt. None of us are totally pure. This is a body mixed with good and bad. So we have to be very understanding and then we have to be balanced in pain and pleasure. That is a high state. Because normally people complain the minute some adversity strikes and they forget about God the minute some prosperity strikes. They want to celebrate, they want to enjoy, call their friends, go on vacations and then they do all those things, forget about God. And when the pain strikes, then they think of God. But um, then they complain, why this happened to me? Why I am such a religious person? I pray to God all the time. Why did God do this to me? He didn't do it to bad people. <laughs> so you see, it's a very um, deep state. When God loves you, he tests you. And when tests come, understand that he is personally interested in you. He's molding you, shaping you like a goldsmith. 
He is um, shining you from the inside. Hari Om Tat Sat. I hope you are enjoying these beautiful shlokas. We will start from shloka number uh, 14 in tomorrow's satsang. Hari Om. <laughs>